welcome to the third chapter of physics so today we are going to deal about our third chapter energy okay so from your lower sections i'm sure that you have heard about energy or you have heard about work whatever we will just discuss what is work then after that we are going to discuss about the energy work so what do you mean by work have you heard about work sometimes uh, we will you might have heard about so much works in the in your uh, daily life but sometimes in physics if we have to consider an action as work we have two conditions first one the last year we have learned about force we have to apply some amount of force on an object second one the object after getting that particular force the object should have a moment in such a way the object have to move in the same direction of applied force so we can say that work is the product of force and displacement so we will uh, write like this work is equal to the product of force and displacement displacement we are uh, uh, representing with the letter s so here we can say that work is if i have one object is placed somewhere so if i apply some amount of force from this direction if the object is moving in the same direction that means in the same direction and moving and placing the next position then we can say that uh, this object is having a displacement of same direction of force then i can say that i have done some amount of work so it's clear if we are applying some force on an object if the object is moving towards the same direction of the applied force then we can say that we have done some amount of work okay this only we will consider in physics as work for example when you are carrying some amount of for example you are carrying your school bag and when you are coming from home suppose you are taking your school bag and you are uh, traveling in a straight line then we can say that school bag will be having bag will be having a weight weight means the amount of force by which earth is attracting and that weight is acting downward and in order to carry your bag on your shoulder in your shoulder you are applying the force upward in order to carry your school bag but the movement of the school bag is not in the same direction that means uh, your school bag is moving when you are traveling in a road your school bag you are applying force in upward direction but your school bag is moving in straight direction so we cannot consider that one as a work at that time you are not doing any amount of work but after reaching the school you know that we have stairs to first floor second floor and all at that time what will happen you are applying force here and the school bag also moving in the upside direction at that time you are doing some amount of work so that's why we are defining work is the product of force and displacement but we have to keep it in mind that this displacement should be in the same direction of applied force the next one uh, sometimes you will say now we are having some homework or mental calculations are there when the exam is going on we are mentally we are doing some amount of work that work that is not considered as work in physics clear so this is regarding work this much things we have i think you have already heard about now we are entering to our chapter what is energy what is energy energy means the capacity of the capacity to do work the capacity to do work is called a energy the capacity to do work is called a energy now if you want to do some work suppose if you want to uh, come come if you want to come from uh, home to school if you are not having enough break first what will happen when you are reaching the home uh, the, from the home to school you will be standing in the veranda for the assembly and sometimes you might have seen that some people will be suddenly falling down unconscious they are getting unconscious and they are falling down how it happens they may not be taking enough breakfast in the morning 
if they are not taking enough food our body is not going to get there any amount of energy and when you are walking or when you are carrying your school bag when you are climbing the stairs actually you need some amount of our body needs some amount of energy so if we do not have sufficient food at morning what will happen there is no energy in our body so the energy will be over and when the energy is over suddenly what will happen you are not able to stand if you if you want to stand also you need, our, our body needs some amount of energy so since the energy is over what will happen you are going to fall down okay so the capacity to do work is called energy so if we want to do some amount of work we need energy from where we are getting energy we are getting energy from food okay now next one a new term we are studying calorie i don't know whether you have heard it or not calorie what is a calorie calorie okay what is a calorie calorie means the amount of energy required to raise the temperature of water suppose we are having water when we are taking water and they giving in the stove sometimes the temperature will be room temperature suppose if our room temperature is 20 degree if you want to increase the temperature of water from 20 to 21 that means 1 degree celsius we are going to increase so the energy required to raise the temperature of water by 1 degree celsius is called 1 calorie by 1 degree celsius so the amount of water or the amount of energy in order to raise the temperature of water to 1 degree celsius from the whatever be the temperature from there in order to raise 1 degree celsius how much energy we need that much energy is called 1 calorie calorie was earlier this was expressed this was, this was one of the unit of energy and this was expressed earlier nowadays mainly we are using the si unit as joule joule is the si unit joule is the si unit so why we are uh, now expressing in joule already we have expressed that what is equal to force into distance moved distance moved now force we know that uh, the unit of force is newton and the unit of distance is in meter so we can define joule one joule will be equal to when you are uh, applying one newton force one newton force on an object if the object is moved by one meter we can say that we have done one joule work we have done one joule work so when we are applying one newton force on an object if the object is moved by one meter then we can say that uh, the energy spent is uh, one joule the energy spent is a uh, one joule now again i think in class six we have learned some multiplies and uh, sub multiples multiples and sub multiples of uh, all units so here we are having some multiples we are dealing one kilo calorie what is mean what do you mean by one kilo calorie one kilo calorie will be equal to thousand calories thousand kilo cal uh, thousand calories will be known as a one kilo calorie and one kilo joule will be equal to say thousand joule one kilo joule will be is equal to thousand joule and this is the relation and the relationship between calorie and uh, joule one calorie will be equal to four point 186 joule this is one of the main or sometimes in the exam there will be a question uh, shortly there might be some questions of numericals how we can transfer uh, convert calorie into joule or joule into calorie or what is the relationship between calorie and joule so it is clear that uh, one calorie will be equal to 4.186 joule 4.186 joule okay now we are moving to the main set that means we have to already you know what is the energy energy is the capacity of doing work now we are going to uh, see what are the different forms of energy what are the different forms of energy so it is clear energy energy is the capacity of doing work and what is the si unit of uh, energy it's a joule one joule will be equal to one newton into one meter one newton into one meter now we are moving we are first set of uh, uh, 
energy what's that first form of energy energy mainly we are going to consider as two mechanical one of the main is the mechanical energy and in mechanical energy what will happen there will be in mechanical energy two branches are there first one is a first one is a mechanical energy two branches are there first one is a kinetic energy and second one is a potential energy okay so what is mechanical energy the energy possessed by a body due to work done the energy possessed by a body energy possessed by a body possessed by a body due to work done due to work done energy possessed by the body due to work done is called mechanical energy okay work done means surely we are applying some amount of force and when we are applying some amount of force surely some dis uh, displacement should be there that's so the energy possessed by a body due to work done is called mechanical energy now in mechanical energy there are two cases one is kinetic energy and second one is a potential energy one is kinetic energy and second one is a potential energy so what is kinetic energy kinetic energy is the body the kinetic energy of a body is the energy possessed by it due to the state of motion already in the previous chapter we have studied about rest and motion so energy possessed by a body when it is at motion when it is at a motion then this is called a kinetic energy all the moving objects if they are having energy then we will consider that one as a kinetic energy a running car will be having kinetic energy running water will be having kinetic energy a running fan will be having kinetic energy so whatever objects are under motion that energy possessed by that object due to its motion is called a kinetic energy then second main second one potential energy potential what will be the potential energy due to the energy possessed by an object due to its position or a rest it will be at a rest so we will consider that the position position due to the position energy possessed by an object due to its position is called a potential energy energy possessed by an object due to its position is called a potential energy now in potential energy there are two types first one is elastic potential energy what is elastic potential energy suppose if you are having a rubber band sometimes we will stretch the rubber band or sometimes we will be stretching the spring okay so at that time what will happen either if you are leaving the rubber band it will be uh, shortening or if you are stretching the uh, spring and if you leave suddenly it will be becoming bigger so that type of potential energy energy stored on a spring or a rubber is called a elastic potential energy they are not at motion they are at rest then gravitational potential energy what is gravitational potential energy suppose if one object is raised from the ground level you already you know what is gravitational uh, force what is gravitational force gravitational force will be the force by which earth attracts a body so i if i take this duster if i am raising this one from the ground level in order to raise up to this height i have to do some amount of work i am doing i am taking this one means what the force apply or weight will be acting downward so i am applying force on upward and this object is moving upward so i can say that i am doing some amount of work in order to place at this position so in order to when i am raising something at a position from the ground what will happen the work done will be high so what will happen the energy possessed will be there so that type of energy is called a gravitational potential energy okay uh, you might have seen the mango tree near to our uh, in front of the school now so there are so many mangoes now okay so the mangoes are at rest but they are raised from the ground level so the mangoes are having an energy due to its position so that is called a gravitational potential energy gravitational potential energy now next one is a uh, we are moving to the other forms of energy so in energy mechanical energy is the main form energy possessed by a body due to the work done kinetic energy due to its motion and potential energy due to its rest now another forms of energy first one is light energy first one is the light energy okay if one thing is should be considered as the energy it should have it should be able to do some amount of 
work. His light is able to do some amount of work. Surely you might have heard about lasers and all. If you are taking the laser and if you are showing it on the concrete wall, what will happen? The concrete wall is going to divide into two pieces. Okay, so the light is able to do some amount of energy. Again, from the from the lower classes, yes, you have heard about photosynthesis. Sun is the ultimate sun is the ultimate energy source on the earth. From the sun, we are having mainly two forms of energy: light energy and heat energy. Light energy and heat energy. Okay, now light is a form of energy. In order to prepare food in a uh, on plants or the green uh, or that process is called photosynthesis we need a light energy so light is a form of energy if you do not have energy the plants cannot store energy okay next one is heat energy as i said heat is a form of energy okay is heat is doing some work that means uh, you might have seen the cooker no? pressure cookers in our home there is one whistle is there whistle means uh, when the water is getting enough heat temperature what will happen heat at that time what will happen the whistle will be rising up when the whistle is rising up sound will be heard so how the whistle is raised up the heat is doing some amount of energy heat is pushing the uh, whistle upward and at that time what will happen the sound will be heard so heat is a form of energy and main source of energy, heat and light both are sun then again sound energy is sound is doing some amount of work yes sound is able to do some amount of work when the drum is beaten at that time what will happen the sound will be heard so when you are beating at that end the vibration will be there on the drums so that is some so when this uh, vibrations are there it will produce sound and how you are hearing that one the sound waves will be traveling towards in, in uh, through the air and that wave will be striking on the eardrum and our eardrum is going to vibrate so surely in order to have vibration surely that a sound wave should do some amount of work so sound is a form of energy another one is a electrical energy electrical energy one of the most disturbed form of energy is a electrical energy without electrical energy we are we cannot think a day without the electricity almost all the equipment in the world is working depending upon electricity so electrical energy is flow of electrons when the electrons are flowing then it will give the electrical energy so electrical energy electrical energy can be the fan is working or the mixer grinder is working or your mobile phone is getting charged everything is from the electrical energy then next one is the chemical energy energy stored in matter already we have discussed about matter we have studied so energy processed due to or processed by in matter stored in matter is called a chemical energy and that become available for work through chemical process is called a chemical energy the as i said photosynthesis is used by light energy when they are the plants are cooking food they are storing food in the form of chemical energy or when we are taking uh, 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 food for our body, our body is storing chemical energy and this chemical energy will be under chemical action, what will happen? Our body will get a heat. Okay, so like that is the mechanism. Then next one is the magnetic energy. Last year in class 6, last chapter was magnet. We, you are very familiar with the magnet. When something is placed near to the magnet, it will be attracted. The force is in this side and the object is moving towards the magnet. Work is done. So it's an amount, it is called a, it is it will be considered as energy. It is a magnetic energy. Then the last one is nuclear energy. I think you might have heard about atoms in physics and chemistry. So when these atoms, in the, in the atoms nucleus is there, when the nucleus is cut into two pieces, a large form of energy is formed that is called a nuclear energy this nuclear bomb or atom bomb you might have heard that is an example of nuclear energy that is an example of nuclear energy then so what we have discussed now we have we were discussing about uh, energy is the capacity of doing work as a unit is joule mainly mechanical energy two types chemical um, kinetic energy and uh, potential energy in potential energy two are there elastic potential energy and uh, gravitational potential energy then other forms are light energy heat energy sound energy electrical energy chemical energy 
magnetic energy and uh, nuclear energy okay now two more small topics are there in, uh, in this section or in our chapter very small chapter transformation of energy and law of conservation of energy so what is transformation of energy transformation of energy means we are changing energy from one form to another form when the energy is uh, changed from one form to another form that is called a transformation of energy for example photosynthesis you are familiar light energy we are considering light light energy will be uh, changed into which one chemical energy chemical energy it's a transformation of energy or uh, uh, dam from the dam we are uh, taking electricity so at that time at the dam the water is uh, stored that means it's not flowing if the water is not flowing it is having potential energy it is having potential energy then that water will be sent through through a pipe at that time what will happen water will start flowing that is kinetic energy then finally the generator will be working due to that force of kinetic energy the turbine will be changing working the turbine uh, uh, will be working and it will give the electrical energy so it was to first it was potential energy then transferred into kinetic energy then finally we are getting electrical energy so this is called a transformation of transformation of energy now next one is a uh, or uh, for example car engine car engine fuel is a chemical energy so surely you will put diesel or petrol and that what will happen when the engine works this will change this chemical energy is going to change and the car is having a kinetic energy then uh, again when an electric bulb is switched on suddenly what will happen the bulb will be glowing at that time also the electric energy will be changed into light energy and the heat energy or the tv will work at that time we will give only electrical energy at that time suddenly what will happen the light energy we will get from the tv sound energy we will be getting from tv and some amount of heat energy also will be getting from the tv then the last one is law of conservation of energy what do you mean by law of conservation of energy law of conservation of energy means energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be transformed it can be transformed from one form to another form this statement is very important energy can neither be created nor be destroyed but it can be transferred from one form to another this is called a law of conservation of energy it says that in the universe the total amount of energy will be a constant one the total amount of energy will be a constant one okay we cannot sometimes if potential energy is increasing at that time kinetic energy will be decreasing or if the kinetic energy is increasing then the potential energy will be decreasing and some of that uh, already we have discussed about potential energy kinetic energy light energy heat energy sound energy nuclear energy everything everything will be a constant one it will we cannot destroy any form of energy or we are not able to create any amount of energy now energy can be neither be created nor destroyed but it can be transformed from one form to the another and again suppose we are having we are just considering a stone which is placed at a height in order to raise this one we have done some amount of work so this will be having potential energy maximum that means for example if i consider sometimes 100 joule then kinetic energy this body is at rest then zero the total amount of energy is 100 joule it will not change and this start moving and it is reached into halfway at that time what will happen potential energy will be is equal to 50 and kinetic energy also will be is equal to 50 but total is 100 100 joules then again when it is at the ground again it is at rest at that day potential energy will be is equal to 100 and kinetic energy will be is equal to zero again 100 this is called the law of conservation of energy or when we are considering a roller coaster or a car just like we are considering a path the car is starting from here a car is starting from uh, here then suppose if it is if it is at rest potential energy will be is equal to maximum e and 
kinetic energy will be is equal to zero. Then uh, when we are reaching to the this this part, what will happen? This potential energy will be is equal to e by two, and kinetic energy will be also is equal to e by two. So this will be equal to e. Again, if it is coming here and if it is uh, stopping at that end, what will happen? The potential energy will be is equal to e, and the kinetic energy will be is equal to zero. Okay, so this is called the conservation of energy. This is called the conservation of energy. So this is our chapter. This is our chapter. So we were discussing about what is energy, what is the SI unit of energy, then kinetic and potential energy. Then again, from here now in this topic, we are going to uh, we have just uh, learned what is transformation of energy and the law of conservation of energy. Transformation of energy we are just uh, changing from one form to the another form. Law of conservation of energy. Energy can either be created or be destroyed, but it can be transformed from one form to the another form. Okay, so you go through the class, observe the class very well. Two or three times you can just uh, see the class and make everything clear. Thank you.